boys, boys, boys and girls. Look, I've had a million requests. Okay, I'm talking crap. Five. I had five or six requests on email to explain to people what I'm carrying on about with boosters and, you know, I haven't got enough power to explain all that sort of stuff. That's very difficult because me and electricity, we don't get along. But I do understand the basics. So let me try and explain. And to the smarter guys on here, if I make a mistake, let me know. But so far in my life at 56 years old, it's worked for me. Electricity is a hell of a lot like water. They don't like each other, but it's like water. And there's only one rule when you build a model layout, a model railway layout, that you need to understand, and that's this. Ohm's law. All right? Voltage, current, resistance. With this bastard yeah, being the big culprit, this act is all our problems, that oak. All right, so let me explain. Now, what is resistance? Resistance is where I feed my power in here um, into my track. All right? The machine pushes 21 volts, 6 amp. That's what goes in here. All right? But we have a slight little problem. Resistance is just what it says it is. Resistance. So through these rails here, that's where your current flow. Now resistance is anything in these rails or the material itself that restricts the flow of electricity. Okay? So if I have the length down to the bottom there and I have zero resistance, voltage and the amps will remain exactly the same as it is here. But we have one slight little problem in the model railroad world. And that's these little bastards. That's a fish plate. Now, what inevitably happens, especially when your track's not fastened, uh, you know, that's why I make sure that I fasten it both sides of the fish plate that you don't get movement like that. And I'll show you the specific one because I had a problem here. This is the problem, you see there, that these trains, my trains are heavy. So they go over here and they step on this thing all the time. So in this fish plate, there's movement. That is your current conductor. That is what lets the current through. Now you have a problem here. One bad fish plate on a layout can stuff everything up for you. Trust me on that. Because this is resistance. If there is a problem here and you, your voltmeter might not show it. This is a mistake that a lot of guys make. They take their multimeters and they measure the power over there and it's 20 volts and it's 20 volts here and everything is hunky-dory. But you did not measure the resistance. Now Ohm's law in layman's terms, means that if you have um, consistent, I need to explain this nicely now, if you have consistent current and voltage, but you double the resistance, you will half that current. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that all of a sudden there's anything. No, 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 no. What it means is that that machine, the demands on the machine, that's only six amps, Maximum power um, out of that will now be, if it's 0.3 ohm here, it's 6 amp over there, that's fine. If it's 3 ohm there, it's 60 amps over there that that machine needs to produce to get the same current and voltage flowing. 60 amps, 10 times what it's doing now with the resistance. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is if your resistance doubles your current halves, your current and your voltage halves, that is the problem in model railway, model railways, that's the problem, 
And that is the enemy. Resistance is the enemy. So you need to try and um, overcome that. How do you do that? You do it like this. Seek wires, positive and negative, a whole lot of them. Because, and onto this, you couple your um, controller's power supply. Your power supply that goes through the track. You couple it up to this. And out of this, you do droppers. Like here. You have a little dropper here. Positive and negative. Going into positive and negative. Because through that wire, if I go around here, and it's 110 meters round, by the time I get back to the machine here, the resistance is negligible. On that, that thickness wire, it is negligible. You don't even, there's no, there's very little drop. Very little resistance, okay? Because you haven't got brakes in it and fish plates and that sort of thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that is why we do a buzz wire. Now, one of the guys asked that I, he's a new guy. So just let me explain how a booster works. A booster is a very simple thing. You couple the booster to your controller. Okay, it goes in at the back there so that you have digital signal that everything that happens on your controller gets put through to the booster. So that when it goes over to the booster sections, which I'll come to now, that the signal from your controller gets picked up by the booster and the train comes, goes into the booster section, it's fine because the booster and the controller speaks to each other. So it'll just carry on. Boop. So the controller tells the booster what to do. All right? That what train's going over there, what speed it's doing, sounds on, wara, wara, wara. Okay, so you need the connection between the controller and the booster. But now you need to divide this whole behemoth into blocks. Because obviously you can understand now, each booster has its own power supply. And each booster now gets coupled up to a piece of track of your choice. You break this thing up in blocks. So say, for instance, this is what I want to do. I now, after the points here, right here, boom, I want to do a booster to the top. Okay? So you cut the rail. Or take the fish plates off and put insulating fish plates on. An insulator looks like that. That's an insulating. See, there's a piece of plastic in the middle there. You put an insulator in so that obviously you now know don't, don't push the, the booster's power supply and the, the supply that it, it, it sends to the track, um, obviously not to where your controller is because then you'll have, instead of 20 volts, you'll have 40, which decoders absolutely hate. They normally go poof with lots of smoke and stuff. All right, so you need to... Obviously, now cut the rail and separate it from where your controller is on. And now on this section here, you put your booster. So your booster will run all these tracks. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, all the way to wherever you want to. What I want to do here is then I'll cut it again just before the point here. I'll cut it right here. Zip. So this sidings will all be on a booster. And the bends, the corners there at the top, that'll be on the main machine. That one will be on the main machine. And then that side, I want to put the other booster and do it the same way. So I have a booster running there, booster running here, and the machine doing the corners. Now, the guy said to me, and this is a mistake that a lot of people actually make. So now, if you have a 7 amp booster and a 6 amp machine, does that mean that you have 13 amps on the tractor? No. No, doesn't mean that at all. It means you have 7 amp on the track, yeah? And you have 6 amp, whatever your machine is, your controller is, on the bend. So 7 amps here. There's not 13 amps here, that's 7 amps here. Which is why I'm going to need more than one booster. I'm going to need a couple of boosters. However, um, I did explain, he said to me, yeah, but what's that going to help? It will, because you've got blocks. So when a train's, one train's here, and one train's over there, that train over there 
doesn't do anything with this booster. This booster only supplies here. You put a booster that side, so that train in that block is on that booster. So if I pull six amps per two trains, the only time that that booster will be in danger of being with power is if both trains are in the same section. And that's why it's important when you break up your layout into blocks that you keep that in mind. Watch your traffic, you know, uh, the bends, you know, out of the sidings, where are you going to get trains, both sides of the layout, running on the tracks um, where you can actually have four trains running on one booster? Is in the bends. So if two of them is going around their opposite directions, and two of them is going down there in opposite directions, you have four trains on the same booster. It will go poof, or it will cut out. So, you know, this is, this is the other thing that I'm actually battling with last night. I said to, to Neil, I said to you, know, maybe I should put a booster on the bend, and a booster on that bend, and then a booster between the two sidings, because here is through traffic. The ones that's standing there that you pull off and carry on, with, you know, they're not running all the time. So, yeah, um, and you must also remember that in a, in a bend, it tends to pull the flanges of the wheels onto the side of the rail, which causes more drag, which takes more amps to pull. So, yeah, I was actually thinking about this last night. Maybe I should put a booster on the bend there and a piece of straight there and, and then the bend that side, another booster, and a little bit in, and then just run two boosters on each siding. First price would be four boosters. Then you can do all that. You know, and yeah, run the six amp on the table that's going to be in the middle there because that's also only going to be shunting. There's one or two trains going to run there like an ever. You know, so yes, I'll have to make very... Uh, planning your blocks is very important when you fit boosters. But that is the problem with the booster. It doesn't add to the power of this controller. Uh, you know, it doesn't make it... 13 amp if you've got a 6 amp machine and a 7 amp booster. No, no, no. It remains 7 and 6. So, um, you've got to keep that in mind. Right. So, basically, that now, I hope, explains everything that you need to know. Um, you know why I use the buzz wires. And, obviously, with buzz wires, it's always ridiculously difficult to keep it neat. Which is why I put the things, I've got all the way down there now, just to get the wire in there. And these things, this cut, to keep them tight, you know, to, to, to wind them up that they're nice and tight. It, it's quite an art to do proper, neat buzz wires. And then the other problem is, when you do the dropper, you need to solder into it. You know, there's clips that you can use and all these fancy little click clips. And I don't trust those things. Open the wire, put the bloody dropper into it, and solder it. Boom! End the story. Then you know you... And, and put an insulation tape around it. It doesn't look that neat, but it bloody works. All right, dude, so that's basically that. I just thought I'd make that clear, or as clear as I think it was. If there's any questions, just ask. If I'm wrong, just tell me, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, dudes, I'm going to start building these two... Um, Sidings, yeah. Good, I guess we speak later. Good thoughts,